I'm going to give you a brief, hopefully, and I'm watching my clock here. Aaron's had to stick to five minutes, but let's see what I can do. Uh, State of the Indie Web for uh, this year, or rather this past year. It's been an amazing uh, seventh year, as it were, of Indie Web. We've been doing this since 2011 with the first Indie Web Camp. This is our current website, IndieWeb.org. Uh, this was new as of last July. We launched this. Um, including the new look and feel and the new domain name changed from IndieWebCamp to IndieWeb.org. It's been going well. You can see that we have our focus here, that it's about uh, you having control and ownership of your content. It's yours. You deciding about how you're connected and with whom, when, and when, um, and to where, which services. And you are in control. You get to decide what to post where on your website in whatever format you want um, and keep them permanent and keep things keep the longevity that uh, you would want, as opposed to the services that uh, shut down all the time. Uh, Aaron alluded to the principles. There's a much longer list of principles, and I will zoom this a little bit. Uh, there's 11 of them, in fact, on our website. Um, owning your data, you know, using tools, building tools for yourself uh, first and foremost. Uh, use eating your own dog food. These are all important. And as a community, we encourage everyone to document their work and share it, as well as open source. Uh, what you can um, uh, to to enable each other, and that's one of the reasons why a lot of people here have succeeded is because the people before us have open sourced and documented their work. But the principles are great. I'm going to let folks read through them at their own uh, time. So let's keep moving right along. The um, in the last year, there have been a number of breakthrough posts about the indie web, sometimes directly mentioning the indie web. So there was the Distributed Web Summit at the Internet Archive last year after Indie Web Summit. And one of the things that came out of that was uh, some great coverage about indie web in particular uh, that made it to Fast Company and other outlets. Um, and then uh, it, it really seems to have peaked. Like there are a lot of uh, backlash against social media. It seems to, a lot of people have responded with, uh, positive responses, and this is a blog post uh, that uh, that I really appreciated. That's encouraged everyone to you know, fix the internet by writing good stuff and being nice to people. Um, this is a very indie web post, and it was very much advocating for you know bringing your content back to your own website. Really, like what the indie web is about. And I love the fact that a lot of this is happening organically. I don't even know this person, and yet this is happening kind of like emergently, like not from a top-down fashion in a grassroots fashion. Um, here's another blog post by a longtime web developer and designer, uh, Rachel Andrew in the UK, that wrote a, a lot about her insights over the past year about, uh, you know, she's been blogging for a long time and how a lot of her stuff shifted to different places like CodePen or Medium or Instagram, and then she basically made the point about we want to do this all back to, she wants to do this back on our own site in 2017. And I think that is one of the best like summaries of why the indie web matters um, to an individual. Here's another great post uh, from Kimberly, doing my part to fix the internet. Again, along the same lines of that first blog post you saw, fix the internet by writing good stuff and being nice to people. So there's really been this growing uh, awareness and it has hit various you know, media outlets and such. People are recognizing the indie web as a movement. It will actually help control people with their own web presence. I'll spoil it for you at the bottom. The article says yes. <laughs> um, but it's been great. It's not only these outlets, though. There's also been uh, the other thing that happened this past year that I haven't seen before was a pretty strong uptake of the 100 Days projects in this community. How many have heard about the 100 Days projects? Like try and do something productive. Um, yourself for 100 days. And Aaron did this with the uh, Indie Web, 100 Days of Indie Web, which I find a kind of, kind of phenomenal uh, accomplishment. He went through and did 100 Indie Web related uh, like developments, like built stuff or deployed stuff or, ed or like published specifications and such for 100 days in a row, which was kind of amazing. At this, but if that wasn't amazing enough, he also decided, well, that's too easy, so I'll do 100 Days of Music as well, where he composed the 100 Days things. There was a bunch of other 100 Days projects people picked up in the community in this past year. I tried the much more uh, humble and meager 100 Days of Positive Posts, so, <laughs> which I don't even have a summary of tags on my site, so I'm just linking you to the Twitter summary, uh, which I can do because I posse, I posse all my 100 Days posts with the 100 DOPP um, 
uh, hashtag, which I was fortunate enough for apparently no one else used, so, uh, or, or except for uh, Chris thanking me for that. Uh, but there's been a lot of indie web indie posting in the last year, much more than previous years, and I wanted to call that out. That is the moral of this story here. Uh, in terms of community, there has been a number of indie web camps again this year. Uh, Bellingham is a new one that just happened, thanks to Gregor. Uh, Nuremberg and Düsseldorf happened again, and that was part of the first ever indie web week. So this is a summary post from uh, Julie, who's uh, did a, who's a this is her website, of course. Uh, who's a photographer and indie web user, and it just goes to show like the. Uh, amazing work this is happening. This all happened in, in Europe in May, in Germany. So it's not just a US phenomenon. Um, the Indie Web Week, I was uh, sad to miss uh, myself, but they obviously had a lot of fun, uh, made some animated GIF pictures. So I think that's kind of our challenge right there for this weekend is uh, see if we can outdo that animated GIF, uh, <laughs> among other things. All right, what else is new from this past? We have, um, oh, all of the, session, the sessions from those two indie web camps, Düsseldorf and Nuremberg, there's video online for them. And that's, that was so amazing as someone that didn't go to be able to go back and watch those uh, and just click on those links to watch those sessions. You really get like an update of what's going on and kind of build on other people's work. We are doing the same thing here. Everything goes well, cross your fingers, we'll have video from every session and not just like one track, which we're hoping to accomplish. Homebrew Website Club. Uh, we have a bunch of new regular uh, cities this year. Uh, Baltimore has picked up, Bellingham, Berlin, uh, Birmingham as well, and London has become regular, which is awesome. Nuremberg is continuing on, and of course, Portland and San Francisco. Uh, in addition to that, we have a bunch of different cities popping up, uh, which have established a couple of uh, new indie web camps, Edmonton and Fort Collins. And also gaining in popularity is the number of virtual Humber website clubs, uh, where it's just you just join via a video platform like this and you chat in person for a little while. So if, if those any of those sound interesting to you or near you, go get them started. There's many more cities that are getting started, about to have one or had one, or need restarting. Would love someone who, if you know someone in these other cities, would love to help participate, help get built up. All right. Last year, we went from one IRC channel to two. We started what we had IndieWeb, and we added IndieWeb dev, Indie dev because we were having so many development-related discussions, whereas there's a lot more people showing up saying, I just want to get my website to work. So we split in half, and that's been, really, that's been great. But uh, as with any growing community, we found that there was a need to add to double the number of channels again. So this year, there is now uh, the IndieWeb meta channel, which we'll be adding here shortly. Um, it literally just got hooked up like last night. And that's for anything that's like community-related community discussions or community tools, the website, uh, chat about chat. You know, if you've got questions, where do I go? You can start with Meta. Uh, and as well as that, I'll talk about the other channel we got, which is, uh, which is WordPress. All right, moving right along. Huge accomplishments in standards in the IndieWeb community. Uh, the web mention uh, spec that was developed at the IndieWeb has become a W3C recommendation. That's huge. <laughs> there's a test suite. There's over a dozen interoperable implementations that send and receive web mentions. As if that wasn't enough, we also took Micropub to a full W3C recommendation in the last year. This just happened in May. Also has a test suite. Also has over a dozen clients that support it and growing. Over a dozen servers that uh, that support it and growing. It's uh, pretty impressive to see how rapidly the uptake is going. And I'll give you a couple examples of that soon. Uh, WebSub, the formerly known as PubSub Hubbub spec, is a candidate recommendation, which means there's it's stable. Features are frozen. There's a test suite, and now we need those implementation reports. So if your site implements WebSub publishes or consumes it, or you have a hub, please submit a test suite so we can take it on its way to, towards recommendation. And lastly, uh, what was not even a draft last year is now at least a working draft, the post-type discovery. And this, is, this adds a nice building block to the piece of web mention, where when you get a web mention, how do you know what to do with it? Post-type discovery gives you an algorithm for determining what type of response it is, um, among other things. So that's the summary of that. 
Uh, Vouch is still being iterated, and I have a feeling with all the uptake that we're getting, we're going to be needing even more work, uh, more implementation of the Vouch protocol, which is for fighting spam and abuse. Okay. As if those standards, standards are great, but what really counts is when standards get deployed. And uh, one of the people in the, in the uh, community, Ben Roberts, I don't know if he's on our uh, network or not, has been doing a lot of work, as well as others, not only documenting um, what's been implemented in software that works for personal sites, but also large multi-user software, as well as advocating it. So we know about Known, that's supported this stuff for a while, and WordPress, we've had plugins. Microblog just launched this year, micro.blog, uh, which I'll talk about briefly. And in addition, uh, other popular sites that have launched in the past year, like Mastodon, um, and sites that have been around uh, but have gotten improvements now, like GNU Social, now all, now all support microformats too, which means that in addition to the foundational layer of HTML, which is what the web is built on, and that's the reason the web works, the meaning on top of that HTML to be able to determine what are posts and all that that we depend on in the indie web is now built into all these other systems and platforms, therefore growing the set of sites that can be a part of the indie web. And this is all like work in progress of trying to get all these different networks and software solutions online. I mentioned micro.blog. It launched uh, to a great, uh, very successful um, fundraiser. Um, and one of the best things about microblog is that it's the first service that launched with saying, hey, not only do we, are we supporting you know, tr traditional RSS feeds, we have this new experimental JSON feed, and of course, microformats for everything. Microformat feed, microformat entries, uh, all, the, all the properties are there, as well as launching with web sub support. That previous standard I mentioned, built into micro.blog from the start. Even more impressive than that, instead of coming up with their own proprietary API for their service, micro.blog launched with micropub, the client server API standard that we'd helped develop as their, as their API. So they ship clients that support Micropub that work with existing servers, and their server supports Micropub. So if you have a Micropub client, you can use it. It's an amazing amount of interop that they launched with on day one. This is new. This, this has never happened before. And lastly, uh, I'm sure you've seen all those blue check marks that on various different social media sites that involve like signing over your ID or your passport or your firstborn to get that blue check mark. Uh, micro.blog requires no such thing. They are using the well-established, well equals me microformat standard to verify your account and your website. And so that's a very indie web technology and approach. And so I want to applaud them for that too. All right. The next big thing that's happened with community adoption in the last year is that a, there are many more WordPress plugins now that support the indie web. Or rather, I should say, the WordPress plugins that have been developed have been polished and published to the WordPress directory, which makes it a lot easier if you're, if you're on WordPress to get onto the indie web, which is great. And we'll have more uh, discussion about that um, and how you do that uh, tomorrow. So I'm really proud of the work that the community has done there. So lastly, oh, I should say the there are contributors in WordPress itself, like WordPress core, uh, Brandon Kraft works on Jetpack, that have noticed the indie web and have started adopting it. He just spent like a day or a weekend, maybe even just a few hours, and like added all the um, indie web support to his personal website, and then just started getting the responses. The, these are all like, I mean, he's passing it to Twitter, getting it back there. I'm sure you all have seen this kind of work. Here's an indie web like from Jonathan, uh, who's sitting right here. Um, back to Kraft's uh, uh, post, and then a comment. So he, ha this is someone who had not been a part of the community at all, found our stuff, showed up, deployed it, had it working, and immediately was having a dialogue with people across websites. So the fact that this happened that quickly is, is getting more and more uh, impressive. And this year, this was great to see. So where does that bring us? Um, that is the state of the indie web for 2017. We're at a point where it's easier than ever to get started using traditional CMSs, new CMSs, and get on the indie web. Uh, just being an author or a designer, uh, we have been very developer-centric for many years. And we're, I think this year is really the year that we have what it takes to bring in a whole new generation of folks that are more focused on the content than they are on the code. 